This documentary will focus on two areas. This one here at Rathdowney, and here at Tamrookham, which is about 12 kilometers north of Rathdowney, and find out something about their really quite interesting history. You can see that vast, almost prairie-like landscape out there. That's not what it originally looked like, of course. Before, it was hoop pine and red cedar and blue gum. It was in 1828 that Captain Patrick Logan of the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement came through this area. He loved to explore. And the Logan River actually is just down that hill down there. Oh, and we've got a plaque. To commemorate the 150th anniversary of the climbing of Mount Barney by Captain Patrick Logan. On Dixon's beautiful map of the Moreton Bay region from 1842, he shows a trackway running from Brisbane all the way south to the Logan Valley. On the slightly later crummy Baker's map of 1846, he shows that the track continues much further south through what would one day become the town of Rathdowney and into what is now northern New South Wales. This is, more or less, the course of the modern Mount Lindsay Highway today. The first European squatter in this area at Tamrookham and at Innisplain was a guy called John Campbell. He was here in the early 1840s. He moved on in 1843 when a fellow by the name of William Baker bought the Tamrookham pastoral run. Sometimes spelt Gin Bracken or Gin Bruken, Tamrookham is possibly a European corruption of the Bundjalung language Yugambeh dialect words, Dan Baragan, indicating place of boomerangs. However, as reported in the Bow Desert Times, 10th of February 1933, Johnny Allen, the old half-caste retainer of the Collins family and an authority on the subject, maintained that the name of the station had no special meaning and was merely given by the Aboriginals to the lagoon. So it was William Baker who built the first house here, the, the centre of the Tamrookan pastoral run. The first house was either pulled down or burnt down, I'm not quite sure. But the second house became a very, very famous homestead in the area, in the wider area. And his house was built out of red cedar and for a while he had a tutor here, a tutor to teach his kids. And that fellow's name was, he was a Scotsman, and James Brunton Stevens. And mainly out of sheer boredom of living out here and only having his work, James turned to poetry. And before long, he became a noted and celebrated poet. His most famous work is known as Convict Once. In 1868, Thomas Lodge Murray Pryor bought freehold land and named the area Rathdowney after his ancestor's estate in Ireland. The eldest son, Thomas, also bought some land in the area and then transferred the title to his father. This was not quite the legal way to do things, but many fiddled the books to acquire more land fast. It was a way to hold on to the land and avoid it going to the newcomers, the selectors. Now we come to 1878 when William Baker gives up on the Tamrookham pastoral run and he sells it to a guy called John Collins. Collins had land out at Mundulan and he came down here and uh, moved into the house. In fact, I think the second Tamrookham pastoral run house, which was built by Baker, he didn't end up living in. I think it was finished and then Collins moved in and he was really the first resident some very old houses too. That's where the, the homestead was. And then John Campbell's son, Robert, moved in here after he got married and eventually became the owner and uh, he ran the place. This was in 1886. He went on to have a very illustrious career, this Robert Collins. He became a politician and he was also a pioneer of the frozen meat industry. And also Robert Collins was very big on national parks. In fact, I think he was one of the pioneers of getting national parks started here in Queensland, I do know that Lamington National Park was created as a result of his efforts. It was in 1884 that Lodge Murray Pryor sold his Rathdowney lands to John Collins. And this now brings us to the construction of the very first house in Rathdowney. And it's nowhere you can see from here, but it's over that way. And this here is the entrance to where his house is further up a hill up that way. It's a long, long private driveway. There's a sign out the front there that gives the date of 1876 for the construction of the house, or of the first house anyway. I really have no idea what that is. 
It's either some sort of farm machinery or a howitzer. I'm on the hunt for an old tramway station and I believe it's just up ahead here. There's a little clump of trees and if I'm not mistaken, I think I can see some plaques in there. Yep, so I'm happy. Looks fairly safe. Wow, two plaques. Let's have a look. Centenary of the official opening of the Bodesert Shire Tramway. 1903 it was opened. There's an older plaque here and this one says site of Tabuba Junction. So that's what it was called. Staff were housed here. Locomotive serviced with water and coal and maintenance carried out. Passenger service provided, I didn't know that. And an agency for the post office. So they've made a little memorial thing here off to the side of the road, which is very nice, but it's overgrown now and kind of falling apart. That tree has fallen out of its it's out of the ground. The roots have rotted and it's fallen against the old tramway station sign. The tramway ran from Bodesert down to here at Tabuba where it split. One track went down to Christmas Creek and the other one went to Rath Downey. And the fellow who was officiating here on the day was Sir Herbert Chermside and he was the very first governor of Queensland after Federation. And um, just around from the little trees there's a sign there that says Tabuba Junction. You can see the driveway, that may be a modern one, I don't know, but anyway, the tram line was through here. And here's the site of another of the old stations on the boat is a tramway line. This one is called Dull Boller. Actually, there's two Dull Bollers. There's this one here. This was the tramway station, but just down the road there, there was the dull boller on the Brisbane to Sydney train line, the, the big passenger one, and freight as well. The Brisbane Courier newspaper of the 4th of May 1912 calls Rath Downey an embryo township. It goes on to say that a bank, billiard saloon, a school and a fruit shop had already been built, and a start on the police station had been made. Clearly, having a billiard saloon was more essential than a police station, and there was no mention of a church. The first one here wouldn't be built for another 17 years. One of the main reasons for the tramway station to be built here was to get the timber which was being logged in this area out and up to Bow Desert and Brisbane and beyond. Within a few years you had uh, this little road here, row of shops and uh, had the pub, the hotel down there. The whole town here owes its existence to the tramway and now the tramway is gone. But you do have the Mount Lindsay Highway. Just across the road is the Rathy Pub, the Rath Downey Hotel, um, established 1910. Petrol station, which looks permanently closed. There's a little park in the middle here, Collins Park, of course, the very early settlers here, European settlers. Memorial ground over there. That's where the railway line went through. I'll take a look at that. And a couple of old shops in the hall down there. I came here the other week just to do a bit of location scouting and all along this road right here, either side, were dozens and dozens of motorbikes. Yeah. This was noise central on the day, that was a Sunday, but today's Friday, so it's um, nice and quiet. Old butcher shop, later on it became a florist by the looks of it, but it's out of business. A little peek inside. Yeah, that's empty. Empty old store. It's brick though. It's, um, the town is mainly wood. You come around the side and see old signs saying things like off the bone and smoked bacon. An old butcher shop. And just across the road is the Rath Downey Hall. That was opened in 1913. The hall uh, has been extended and added to over the decades. And they've had a library there. And they've played movies.
All Saints Church here at Tamrookam. This was opened in 1915 in memory of Robert Collins, local identity and all-round swell guy. It was built using blue gum and iron bark, and the timber for this was sourced here at Tamrookam, just across the road at the property. The wood was sawed at the Lay Sawmill in Bow Desert, and it was dedicated by the very first Anglican Archbishop of Brisbane. His name was St. Clair Donaldson. For those of you who know me, I am definitely not religious, but I do like a good church. It's one of those little hidden gems in southeast Queensland. I'd never heard of it, never seen it uh, um, on the internet anywhere. Gorgeous place. I highly recommend you come down here to Tamrookam and have a look. And as luck would have it, I'm allowed to go inside and have a look. Magpies. They knew I was coming. Just a little bit further down here is a separate little garden cemetery. The main cemetery is over that way. But yeah, Robert Martin Collins, 1843 to 1913. He's the fellow who this church is named after. Well, it's not named after, it's in memory of him. Another interesting grave I found here, this is in memory of Susan Gooden, but her husband, he was born in 1828 and he died in 1911. However, the church he wasn't built until 1915. So was this a cemetery before the church was put here? Because this fellow here, James, he died four years before the church was built. And it's, it's also interesting because the, the, the gravestone right there is set well back from all the others that are behind me there. Just leaving All Saints Church now, and this is confusing to me because when I got here, the gate was open, but the sign here says, look, please shut the gate. Now, I know there's countryside etiquette. If you find a gate open, you leave it open. If you find the gate closed, you go through it and close the gate again. So I'm kind of torn at the moment. Um... The railway bridge behind me is the Sydney to Brisbane railway. That was started, the whole line was started in 1926 and was completed in 1929. There's something I heard about which is kind of unusual and I'm going to be very brave and walk up there because I don't know if there's any snakes or anything. Grave down there, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the grave of a child. The grave of Elizabeth Wilson. She died in 1927 and she was only about two weeks old when she passed away. I really can't figure out why a baby would have been buried here. The fence line is right there. Someone's property. There's the wire fence just there, but the grave is on this side of it, which would, I guess, put it on railway land. The grave dates from 1927. The train line was built from 1926 to 1929. So when that grave was put in, they must have known that, I mean, if the train line wasn't here by then, it was at least pegged out and preliminary work was being done. So whoever buried the child there knew the train line was going to be here. I mean, why not bury the, the infant up at the Tamrookam All Saints Cemetery? I mean, it was in existence by then. That was, the church was built in 1915. This grave is 1927. What a lonely little place for a baby to be buried. Something I've just known here in Collins Park in Rathdowney, there's a little little plaque here on a tree stump and it's commemorating the Enright's General Store, which was in business here from 1909 to 1971. It lists some of their prominent staff members, one of whom is someone called Wow Wilson. I wonder if that person is related to the baby Wilson buried up near the train line. In 1927, the Duke and Duchess of York stayed here at the Tamrookam homestead. They were on a tour of Queensland and other areas of Australia 
and just for a break they uh, they were invited to stay here and they did. Up ahead is a church and I believe it's the St David's Anglican Church opened in 1929. I think it's still in use. I'm not sure. Little gate. The signs out the front, it says it's still a church, but it doesn't look like it gets used much. Uh, nice view from here too. Oh, look at that. And it was also in 1929 that this church opened, St. Joseph's Catholic. Hmm. Terrific spot they've got up here too. Look at this view. And then it was in 1933 that the Tamrukum homestead was demolished, but it wasn't completely obliterated. Parts of the house were used to build other smaller houses. In fact, I think it was up to six houses were built as a result of reusing the timber. One of those is just across the road, and it's this one. It's known as Murphy's. This was built from the, uh, from the timber. I think today it's uh, like a country holiday home. People can rent it if they want the country experience. Okay, so that was in 1933. The house was pulled down. On the other side of the hill, and I'm walking up this hill now, on the other side of this is the Tamrukum Hall. Memorial Hall. Was it a Memorial Hall? Yeah, Tamrukum Memorial Hall. And that was opened in 1952. However, it was in 1944 that the decision was taken to build the hall. And this is it here. I'm approaching it right now. Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh, there's a plaque. It's a, it's a tribute to um, uh, Aboriginal pioneers William Williams and his wife Emily Jackie. They had a lot of kids. Teddy, Eva, Eliza, Willie, Sissy, Henry, Lily, Claude, Clara, Katie, John and Mary. Well, that's nice. There's a little statue at the back of the hall. I love this. This is really good. They've got an advertisement coming up for the Agricultural Expo and uh, they're saying, there's no phone number there. It's just Google it. This is the Mount Lindsay Highway, which is not as busy as I thought it would be. For some strange reason, I'm walking into the middle of it now. I don't know why, I just had to go and walk on the road. And it was here in Rathdowney in 1982 that scenes from Nicole Kidman's very first movie, Bush Christmas, were shot here. Some of the scenes were actually shot in the hall. In fact, if I remember correctly, the camera was set up round about here. Where am I? About here was the camera. And they were looking that way. And a vehicle pulled up here. And I think Nicole got out. Nicole got out just there. And because all the kids were going to a, a dance or something. Benefit to raise money for a horse, I think. Anyway, long time ago. Anyway, yeah, this is where it was. Kidman's very first film. And it wasn't all that long ago that the local residents around here successfully fought the construction of a new dam, which would have seen huge areas to the south and west of Rathdowney lost to the dam waters. In this little train station from Glen App, they've got a map, a 3D relief map of the whole area. There's Rathdowney there, and it shows all the roads Nice wagon. This here is, what does it say? Original Prisoner's Hut, 1934. And they've got these little, little things they've moved to the side here. Very, very cool. What's this one? I don't know, this looks like it was a shop once. And if you come in here, what do we got? Cool, very good. Let's put this on fast forward. All right, so this is the Rathdowney tramway station. It's not on the original site though. That's where the, the station was and they've moved it down to here, not very far. 
So the train line came through on that flat area on that oval. And I think inside they've got so I guess they do. Well museum pieces. Hmm. And a very cool model of what the area looked like. Hang on, I'll try and get some shots. And this here is the Dalbola siding. It was saved from demolition. So there we are. That's my little look at the history of Rathdowney and Tamrookham. What fascinating, beautiful places. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. A lot of my viewers are currently not subscribed, so it would really mean a lot to me if you could hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.